low calorie, sure, will lose you weight in the first month, but that's not what we want to do. Right. Yeah. We want to build the it's metabolism. About sustainability. Yeah. And I want you to be, I want you fed. If you're hungry, I want you to eat. I just want you to make the right choices. If you are working out, your body is telling you you're hungry and you're feeding it the right choices, the right balance of food and nutrients that it needs to build muscle, you're going to build muscle. You're listening to the number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. This is Mind Pump. Now, today's episode, we talk about how to build a fit mom body. Um, you know, mothers have a lot of different challenges, uh, common challenges, things like lack of time. Sometimes you don't have access to equipment. Um, and of course, challenges that come with just being a mom. So what we do in this episode is we talk about how to overcome those way, those things and how to work out to maximize the results that you get from your workouts. Now, in this episode, we also talk about a lot of our workout programs. They can all be found in what's known as the Fit Mom Bundle. And what we're doing for the next 48 hours because of this episode is we're running a flash sale. You can get the Fit Mom Bundle for 50% off, half off an already discounted bundle. All you got to do is go to mapsfitnessproducts.com, find the Fit Mom Bundle, and then use the code MOM50. That's M O M 50. Also, this episode is brought to you by our sponsor. Z Biotics. Z Biotics makes a genetically modified probiotic drink you take before you drink alcohol to prevent you from feeling the negative effects of alcohol. This stuff is weird how effective it truly is. It really does work. We've tested it several times ourselves. In fact, we actually did this drinking game where we tested Z Biotics. And uh, the next day, for all intents and purposes, I should have felt absolutely terrible, but I felt pretty damn good. Uh, Mind Pump right now is actually stocking up on Zebotics to get us ready for the holidays. So if you like to enjoy alcohol every once in a while, but you hate the way you feel the next day, try this stuff out. It really is revolutionary. It's a it's it's a breakthrough. Um, and if you use our code, you get ten percent off. Here's what you do: go to zbiotics.com. That's z b i o t i c s dot com forward slash Mind Pump. So if you guys you guys uh, trained people for uh, right around as long as I did, right, two decades, mm -hmm. if you were to to say uh, who was the most common client you had, and I should, yeah. what I mean by that is the most who's your favorite client, not just favorite, but oh, like it's mine, most of the clients that okay. you got, right? Because we all we all trained a whole variety of people. I trained people in all age groups and mm -hmm. men and women, but um, the the type of person that tends to hire trainers, at least in my experience, tends to be, and let me know if you guys agree with this. It tends to be the middle-aged soccer mom. Yeah, it's like mm -hmm. a, a or businesswoman. Yeah, it's like that's a it's, I had yeah. the most it's like a mom that's in her in her uh, 30s or 40s was one of more more common clients. Yeah, well, I, that's a you know that's a statistical fact, right? So I think yeah. uh, I think I, I read I can't I remember. I feel like they're the most health conscious. Well, it's not only that. You see, this is where women are smarter. Like women mm -hmm. are more open to learning. Like totally. men are men are stubborn. Yeah. You know, we're a little more stupid this way where we we, we think we know everything, right? Mm -hmm. We don't ever pull over and ask for directions. That's what we're talking about. This yep. is like the direction of health and fitness journey mm -hmm. yeah. where women, uh, even if they're more smart than most yeah. of these men- They actually listen. Oh, they, well, they do. They're, they're more <laughs> open-minded yeah. and they're more likely to sign up with a, a coach or a nutritionist yes. or a yeah. trainer. Yes. So they dominate the space. I mean, I would say at least- They're 65. the biggest fitness consumer yeah. when it comes to- uh, Well, I think generally speaking, they're the largest uh, fitness consumer, but as trainers- um, they were most, uh, they were the most common people that I would, that would approach me and ask me about personal training. And there's a few different reasons why one is what you're saying, Adam, is that they're, uh, you know, they don't have this huge ego, right? So they're like, okay, I, I want help. I want to work out and I want to get really good results. You're a professional. Let me hire you. Um, the second thing is the time thing is a big one. Yeah. Um, they don't have, and I get this, I'm a dad, right? Um, you, you, you don't have a ton of time just to go work out every single day and waste a bunch of time working out ineffectively. Yeah. And I know this isn't true in every household, but a lot of times too, like, uh, the, the grocery, uh, like responsibilities, a lot of times, like what we're bringing in, in terms of like nutrition, a lot of times is, was weighted heavily, uh, from the mom. Oh, they control. That's true. A lot yeah. of times they do control the nutrition, uh, and very much household. more concerned with, you know, health appointments and, uh, you know, doctor visits and things like that. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I just feel like, you know, it's a lot easier of a conversation to have initially. That's actually, 
actually an, an interesting point. I never thought about that, but the more I, I think back to the clients that I had, uh, the healthiest households were the ones that were, if the, if the woman was into health and fitness- if the mom was, yeah. Yeah, then typically she's got everybody else. Not always, you know, mm-hmm. not always is, is everybody eating this from the same menu, but if she's controlling the grocery shopping and, and the meal prepping stuff- uh, you saw the rest of the family. Whereas yeah. if it's uh, the other way around, with the, you're trying to get the dad in shape and stuff like that, and then you have the mom who's not on board, that was like one of the biggest hurdles I'd ever have to, yeah, to big overcome. Yeah, that's true. So, and there's now there's a lot of common challenges uh, with being uh, a mom who wants to work out and change your nutrition. Very similar to some of the challenges you'll see with a with a dad as well. One of the biggest ones is time. Uh, you just don't have uh, a whole lot of uh, you know, open time in your schedule. You now, know? when you say that, don't you feel a little guilty though? Because I feel like that reminds me of how what a bad trainer I was when I first yes, started. Yes, because I know I, exactly what you're going to say. Yeah, because uh, so this is so bad. But you know, we again we were taught this way when we first started. Like, I would shame that mom into like oh. working out more. Yeah, that was instead of meeting her where she was at, mm-hmm. and I probably lost a lot of clients because of that. Totally, right? or maybe help them for a short period of time, and then they went back to where they were. Afterwards. It was the whole spiel where it was like, you know, all of us have twenty four hours in a day, and it's it's how you prioritize your time, and your health is more important than anything else. With but without health, then you can't be a good mom, you can't be a good wife, right, you can't. Right, right. So, You're not working hard enough. Yeah, That's what it is. Yeah, you need to dedicate time, <laughs> yeah, and then like, and then okay. what and then what happens is, is as you train people through the years, you start to realize. Just just how ineffective that message is. And then when you become a parent yourself, you really realize, oh yeah, this is very, very challenging. So the the time constraint issue is a big one because this means that whatever workouts you do, they have to be very effective. They have to be very, very effective for your body. By the way, effective does not mean hard. I want to, I want to make that clear because a, a big problem that I would see with the, mm-hmm. the, the moms that would come in and hire me would be that they would think that because they can't come in super frequent, I need to beat the crap out of myself then and yeah. just the go with The intensity has to go through the roof. Yes. That does not mean effective. Effective means effective. Well, Workouts that get your body to adapt and change in, in the positive way and in the most effective way possible. Also, being a fit mom, I think it really encompasses too that balance of uh, in life. Like, you, you know, you could be a mom – uh, and have a kid, uh, but spend seven days in the gym and neglect your child at the same time. Sure, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. So I think that having a balance is so important. I mean, we talked about that in the in the dad episode of yeah. You know, I think part of my mistake as a young trainer was thinking that everybody had similar goals as me, or they wanted to change their physique and wanted to have this competitive looking fit body, where it's like. You know, maybe that takes you five to seven days a week to look, but you can be really, really fit and build a really good, amazing physique with two, three days in the gym. You, you totally, you yeah. totally can. And um, and I used to tell this to a lot of the you know my new clients is that um, most women that I trained were very satisfied with their bodies um, at a body fat percentage that was anywhere between. 19 to even 27 percent. It's a big range. It's a very, very big range. Mm-hmm. Um, but they were happy in that body fat percentage rate range so long as underneath they had some well developed muscle because the muscle then gave them firmness in tone. And so I've had a lot of I had a lot of female clients that would come to me at 27 percent body fat. Mm-hmm. We'd maintain their body fat percentage, build some muscle, and they were very satisfied. I with feel their like bodies. you have to address that word tone since you just used it. I know, and I use the word tone because I uh, people people now Dude. think that that means firmness and whatever. Yeah. The reality is, uh, muscles don't. The tone is a made up word. You build or you lose muscle. But I use the word tone because uh, people understand that means firmness, right? It means yeah, it creates a visual. Firm. Yeah, but it, again, yeah, muscles. You build muscles, and so it's, right. it's just the word build for some reason it has this this like connotation attached to it that like I'm gonna just get like big in size. Yeah. Well, you that was gonna... one of the biggest struggles I had as a trainer was, you know, getting my female clients, uh, fit moms or moms that want to be fit, uh, on board with strength training. I mean, it, to convince them that we want to heavy load squats and deadlift and overhead press and bench press just seemed uh, so foreign to them and didn't make sense why they would train this way because we, they've been marketed to uh, in a total different way for so long. Oh, if there's it was a any, major hurdle. If there's any hmm. category of people that have been uh, falsely marketed to the most, patronized like I've never seen in fitness, it is that 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 category, right? That genre, that avatar of the 
woman who's between 30 to 50 who wants to start working out, probably has some expendable income now because she's either working herself or husband's working, both of them work, um, and they want to get in shape. The workout programs and diets that were marketed to that category of people were the worst. They were the absolute most terrible. I mean, when you see the workout as a trainer, when I would see these workout programs, um, it was very much about they would pray to the fear of building muscle. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. Follow my workout program. You won't build lots of muscle. You'll build long, lean muscles, and you'll yeah. sculpt your body. And we're going to do 5,000 reps of this very ineffective exercise in a very ineffective way. But it's not like a bodybuilder routine. Don't worry. And it was terrible because it was the exact opposite of what they should have been doing. Because everybody knows you can get longer working out. Yeah, yeah. no, that yeah. doesn't work. Again, muscles build or they shrink. Uh, the length of your muscles is genetically determined. You can't change the attachments of your muscles. And to get your body to change in the most effective way really is to train in the most effective way, which is to train in a way that builds and strengthens your body. And so these workouts were pure marketing, no substance. And so there was a lot of hurdles that, um, as a trainer, I had to overcome in this category. Like you said, Adam, it was always a, a few conversations about why, okay, look, I know we're doing barbell squats, or I know we're doing this exercise here. You're not going to wake up tomorrow looking like a professional bodybuilder. You're going to actually get great results doing this. And it was something I would have to communicate uh, at least for the first three months until they started to feel and see the results. Well, not only that, but getting lean means you got to – getting lean, which almost every mom that hired me wanted to do, right? So how Everybody, they, period. That's like right, the most common Right, right, right. So if we want to get lean uh, and we want to do it in the easiest way possible and then be able to maintain this for the rest of my life, I know that I need to build your metabolism. Yes, up. And 99.9% uh, .9 of everybody that walked through the door, that the first step was, can we, can we start to build your metabolism through building strength and muscle and increasing your caloric intake, which is really hard to wrap that around somebody's brain who's coming in that says they want to lose fat. They come in, they say, I don't feel good about my stomach or my flabby arms or whatever it may be. Can we get rid of this and fix this? And you and as a trainer, you go, okay, what I'm gonna have you do is we're gonna lift some heavy weights and we're gonna eat more calories. You know, that was really hard to convince people to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. Here's why that's important, right? So uh when it comes to weight loss or fat loss, um, it you have to take in less calories than you burn or burn more calories than you take in. Same thing, right? That has to happen in order for fat loss to happen. One way you can do this is by burning more calories throughout the day through activity. So you could take an hour out of your day and work out real hard and burn maybe four or 500 calories in that hour. By the way, uh, four or 500 calories is a lot of calories to burn in an hour. I know cardio machines will tell you you burn more. Don't yeah. believe them. Yeah. It's always That's, like two, 300 more than it says. Or double. It's, it's yeah. pure marketing. The reality is the average person would burn maybe four or 500 calories if they're lucky with an intense hour cardio workout, okay? Mm. 500 calories, you can eat really quick, and you have to work really hard to burn those calories. That's one way to do it. Now, the other way to do it is to teach your body to burn 500 more calories a day on its own. That requires less time. Now, I don't have to work out an hour every single day. And there's another component to this. The burning of 500 calories every day, if I do it the wrong way, I actually tell my body to become more efficient with calories. I teach my body to slow its metabolism down. In fact, if you take somebody and you have them do, let's say, an hour cycle, over time their body will learn to burn less calories doing it because the body's getting better at it. Now, other forms of exercise can speed up the metabolism, namely resistance and strength training. That actually tells the body to burn more calories. This works really well with the challenges of being a mother when you don't have lots of time. I don't have an hour every single day that's consistent where I can go and sweat my butt off. I might have two days a week. Why not train in a way that'll teach your body to burn more calories? So now, instead of having to do an hour of exercise to burn 500 more calories, mm -hmm. you're doing your normal daily stuff and your metabolism is burning 500 more calories. Makes a huge difference. And this is the single most effective thing you can do for long-term success because it's very difficult when you have children and or a job to do an hour of exercise, uh, structured exercise every single day. It's a very, very difficult thing to do. I remember when we, we built these bundles, right? So our marketing team came to us and said, you know, we need to get more specific about how we market our programs. And they would come to us and they'd say, okay, it's a, we're going to build a bundle for a fit mom. And then they would ask us, what are the programs that we have that we would recommend to them. And these are the things, and based off the stuff that we're talking about, right? What 
what we would recommend. Now you got to think of, you know, time is an issue. So it's got to be one, they got to have a, a, a routine that's consistently not like crazy amount of time yeah. and days in there. Speed up the metabolism. Right. You also got to think of times where, you know, uh, and I know this as a dad and I know moms, it's even probably more uh, stressful and strenuous is sometimes you can't even get to the gym. So mm -hmm. what can you do? In That's a great one. Right. Access to equipment was always a problem. Right. To take the time to drive the gym, have the gym. Maybe the gym doesn't have kids club. My kids are too young to take there. Right. I don't have access to equipment. How do I get a good workout? Right, right. Or how do you add something to a routine? Like let's say you're running MAPS anabolic to speed something up. Maybe you got a couple weeks before it's beach or bikini time or something and you want to shred some extra body fat, you do want to increase the amount of calories you're burning, what types of training routines would you do? So all this stuff we thought about before we put together a bundle. So there's, there's a, there is there's is a reason behind each one of the programs that we've recommended in that. Yeah, because what happens when you're, when you're trying to accomplish something with yourself is you have to look at the context of your life. You have to look at your schedule, what's realistic for you, and then take a workout program and fit it in there rather than taking your lifestyle and trying to fit it over a workout program because doing it that way, you're not going to get long-term success. It's just not going to work. A 90%, this is statistically true, 90% of people that try to do it that way end up dropping off uh, after a few months. So if you want to really do something that works and be cons in, in, for it to be consistent and work long-term, you want something that fits your lifestyle, something that allows you to work out at home, or work out anywhere, something that has a component that really speeds up the metabolism, something that has a component where, you know what, today I know I had uh, 45 minutes or an hour carved off to do my normal workout, but my kids, you know, something happened with my kids and now I only have 25 minutes. How can I do a 25 minute or 20 minute workout? Yeah. Um, to, 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 the know, most effective way possible. In a most effective yeah, way possible. So it's still moving you forward. And this has always been a battle. Uh, because it, it those windows get get shorter and shorter, uh, you know, as things go on. And, um, you know, this was always the, one of the biggest concerns. It was like, I have, you know, this half an hour period that we can meet, and then that shifts because something else gets in front of that, some other appointment. And um, to be able to have something that you can kind of just pull up and, and rely on and, and be able to perform that, whether you're at your house or at, you know, the park or something close by, or, you know, you can do even while your kids are on the playground playing and you can work out alongside them is, is going to be super beneficial. You know, it's kind of funny how we we ended up in this a similar situation that we all found ourselves in as young trainers, which is trying to convince women that they need to train a certain way. And I feel like we did the same mistake in the digital world, right? So we, we built a program, the very first program that Sal built, which was Maps Anabolic, which is literally like the perfect place or foundation for this mom that we're mm -hmm. talking about right now. But yet it's got this jacked picture of Sal shredded on the mm -hmm. front of it. And I think it's still, it has the same thing. So this, we get the same thing that we were dealing with back when we were 25, trying to convince women that, Oh, you need to follow this type of routine. And we fell into that same trap with this, with the maps anabolic program. I guarantee there's a big portion of women that don't know, don't listen to podcasts on a regular basis, come into the, our, our maps fitness, products swiping through the programs mm -hmm. they see maps anabolic and think that's not me not for me right but the reality is that's the best place and the foundation of where i think this person should start yeah so maps anabolic would be a foundational aspect uh, of your workout now with maps anabolic you are doing two resistance training workouts a week now there are two options with these there's an at-home option where you just use dumbbells and then there's the gym option. But here's the goal with MAPS Anabolic. Build muscle, add shape, add curve, boost your metabolism. This is the big metabolism boosting program. Mm -hmm. If you combine this with good nutrition, which we're going to get into, if you combine this with good nutrition, you will slowly experience a faster metabolism that then becomes a part of your daily life. In my experience, training lots and lots and lots of people, thousands of clients, uh, both directly and by proxy through trainers that have worked with me, on average, I could get very easily someone's metabolism to go up by about 300 calories. In some pretty cool cases, I've had women's metabolism go up by 800 calories or even a little bit more. That might not sound like much, but remember what I said earlier, an hour of hard working out might burn 400 calories. Imagine burning 400 more calories doing what you do every single day anyways. And this requires a lot of psychological training. Uh, you know, like this is something like we... 
we struggled with that as trainers trying to get them in the headspace to really uh, trust the process of that, like to be able to increase calories sometimes and to be able to, uh, you know, eliminate a lot of like excess uh, cardiovascular activity uh, and really just focus on weight training to, you know, build the body back up, build the muscles to where it's something that's a longer approach. It's going to be sustainable so they can enjoy eating food, but also reap the benefits yes. of burning fat. And I think that, uh, you know, initially that's, that doesn't, that's completely con contrary to what you're going to see on infomercials and what's going to be pitched to you constantly about, you know, fixing all this really quick, uh, and getting yourself down to, uh, you know, the body weight where you feel like you're at best, but, uh, to, to be able to include these foundational, uh, workouts and, and to really trust the system is going to take some of that psychological, like leap of faith. Well, it's, it's, it's two days a week, very effective strength training. Here's what you'll get from following, uh, something like maps anabolic. You'll start to feel initially, you'll start to feel stronger. Then you'll start to feel firmer. You'll start to feel firmer in your arms and your shoulders and your back and your glutes and your hamstrings and your quads. Then you'll start to notice your appetite increase. This is your metabolism going up, uh, including uh, also a boost in libido. Those are two uh, common side effects you get from this metabolism boosting. Appetite starts to go up, libido starts to go up, and then the fat starts coming off your body because this is because your body now is becoming uh, less efficient with calories. It doesn't think it needs to store so many calories and is starting to burn them naturally. As you continue with MAPS Anabolic, the body starts to shape. Your shoulders start to become more defined. Your arms start to become more defined. Your legs start to become more defined, glutes, and your midsection. So that's what you would experience through doing something like that. I want to talk about, too, what this what this should look like and feel like for someone who's starting this is the first, like, 30 days. Like, when you come in, and I want to address this because I, what I'd have to always overcome as a trainer is – the client comes in, she comes in, she wants to, you know, lean tone, you know, I want to, I want to lose some body fat, very, very common. Right. And you start off in this routine and, and you, I, I get her convinced. I, I sell her on the idea that she needs to run a maps anabolic type of routine, but here comes the next hurdle. The next hurdle is the scale is not moving. I'm not going down. Like I hired, I paid you all this money. I'm seeing you three times a week or two times a week. It's a month that's gone by and I haven't moved the scale. This kind of speaks to Justin's point about the psychological part. If you're doing a really good job of, of feeding yourself correctly, eating healthy, and, and by healthy, I don't mean just good foods. I also mean enough food, right? To fuel what you're trying to do, which is speed up your metabolism. You should not see much movement on the scale at all. No, but that doesn't mean nothing's happening. Right, oh, right. Yeah. That's what I want to uh, talk about is that you got to understand that if you were fueling your body correctly and we're eating good foods and enough food, right, to build muscle, to speed up your metabolism, we actually don't want to see the scale go down at all because then what I know is probably happening if we're doing all, if you're following the program like we're supposed to, we're eating good foods and you're just not losing weight. I actually, I'm like, this is a great place to be. We have a nice exchange happening right now. You're probably losing X amount of pounds every week in body fat and we're gaining X amount of pounds uh, or fractions of pounds of muscle right. every single week. Now, this doesn't mean that your body won't look different, by the way. The right. scale might say the same thing. But you're going to start to look different because muscle is much more dense than, than fat, right? So let's say hypothetically you lost five pounds of body fat and gained five pounds of muscle. You will still have lost inches. Uh, body fat uh, takes up much more space. It's not nearly uh, as dense. Muscle also looks different. When you have muscle on your body, you have shape. Uh, when you have fat on your body, oftentimes it doesn't give you good shape. So although the scale might not might not change, in my experience, it was like one pound loss maybe um, in that first month, they would notice that their clothes would fit different. They would come to me and tell me that they would get compliments or their husbands would mark on the fact that, you know, this was a common one. This was a real common one for me. My clients would come to me and say, you know, I weigh the same on the scale, but my husband keeps asking me if I lost weight. It doesn't make any sense to me. And then I would have this conversation with them right. and say, well, you've lost body fat and you've uh, built muscle. So that's the foundational workout. Now, one of the drawbacks with it is it requires a structured 45 minutes of the day, twice a week, or maybe an hour of the day. But that always that's not always going to work. Sometimes you have very limited time. Sometimes you're ready to get your workout and then the baby throws food on the floor or they don't want to go down for their nap or your job calls and you're on the phone and the call went too long and now you're left with 15 minutes or 20 minutes. What do I do? Do I just not work out and, and, and not do anything? No. Then you go to 
plan B, which would be MAPS HIT. Um, now, HIT stands for high intensity interval training. So, high intensity interval training burns a tremendous amount of calories in a short period of time. It combines resistance training with some cardiovascular aspects. Mm. So, you do get some muscle building effects, you do get some strength building effects, but really what you're doing is in a 15 minute period of time or 20 minute period of time, you are burning a lot of calories. This is a great workout for short periods of time. Yeah, you're basically resistance training. You just manipulated the rest periods in between uh, versus everything else that you see on Instagram where people are just doing burpees and, and squat jumps and everything back to back to back uh, aimlessly. Uh, this isn't about just sweating and burning calories as much as it's also preserving muscle and you're getting the benefits of uh, a, a, you know effective way to burn fat. Well, this is the this is the most effective way to use this type of training. Also. Totally. So because the the first rule that Sal talked about doesn't isn't nullified here either. Correct. Yep. If you always trained hit style training every day, twenty minutes, because someone's got to be thinking that it's right now. Lose its they're hearing that right now. They're going, wait a second. Why don't I just do that? Why don't I just do that yeah. all the time? And the problem with that is, yeah, if you do it all the time or consistently for weeks on weeks, right? Your body will adapt to it, and sooner or later, you'll you'll become very efficient, and you won't burn as many calories. But if you intermittently introduce it into a solid routine like anabolic, it's extremely effective because the body won't recognize it. You, or you're following a more traditional 45-minute strength training program 90% of the time. And then 10% of the time, when situations like this happen, you intermittently inject this HIT training program, which is phenomenal. And that's the best way. This is the way... I always wanted uh, to use HIT. Like we wrote yeah. that program. It was one of the last programs we wrote. And the reason why it was one of the last programs is we didn't want to encourage people to always train this way because mm -hmm. right. we were afraid of that. We knew that when you teach- It's addicting. Yeah, because it's quick. Yeah. It's quick. It's easy. It's effective. Very, very effective. effective. In the short term, for yeah, sure. Yeah, in short term, it's great. Or used intermittently like this. And so this is why it was in the the Fit Mom bundle that we built is so we could address that. We know that there there are times, just like our lives, It's not. And this isn't just to moms. This is us also- where I, I only got 20 minutes. And so this is how I like to train when time is limited. When I have 45 minutes or an hour, I'm doing a more traditional strength training type of routine. Yes. Now, the thing about HIT, HIT also um, can be done with minimal equipment. It can be done mm -hmm. with just dumbbells. Or if you do the way it was originally written, there's a barbell version as well. Here's the problem with most HIT-style workouts that you'll find online. What they do is they just string a bunch of exercises together with no rest. And they mm -hmm. say, here's your workout. Now, are you burning calories doing that? Yes, you are. Is it better than nothing? Maybe. Um, but risk of injury is very high, and uh, the body adapts very quickly, and you're not getting the most out of your workouts. We wrote the programs and hits. Specifically, we programmed them to balance out the body, develop a great body, and to give you some muscle building effects. As metabolism boosting is the goal here. Always the goal, even with HIT training. Yeah, and even too, I wanted to bring up the flow sessions as the the days uh, where you're actually going through active recovery. And we, we made sure to include that because there's just not a lot of that in a lot of HIT programs out there. And we, want, we really want to consider the longevity and health of your joints. And, and because this does apply a lot of impact on the joints and the body overall, and and this is why it's 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 a limited window where you know we suggest use it. Obviously, people can go. Some people can go a little bit longer than others, uh, and some people are more conditioned for that. But definitely need to consider uh, the overall health and longevity of the joints. This also speaks to how I used to love to program for my moms that would ask me or tell me, "Hey, Adam." Uh, Training's going great. We're on weeks five or six together. Um, this weekend, I'm in town, or dad's got the kid all weekend, and I'd like to do something. What can I do fitness wise? And if it's not a hike or something like that, I'm recommending. I would program a flow type of session, a mobility. I would address something like that in there because it's a great option to add into their foundational routine. So that addresses another part of how I would coach to a client like this that is asking me, hey, can I do more? Are there other things? This is a much more beneficial way for them to add more to their routine that doesn't require 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah. The well, the way, the way I like to use flow sessions is when people tell me, you know, I know I'm supposed to work out today. Didn't get a lot of good sleep last night. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm feeling a little stiff. I'm a little tired. That's I only it. have 20 minutes, but a hit workout's real intense. Should I do nothing? Um, and I'll say, we'll do a flow session. Flow sessions are restorative. So, mm -hmm. so think of it that way. When you go into MAPS HIT, you have the option of doing restorative flow sessions. These are great for those days when you still want to exercise, but you're tired, you're stiff, 
uh, you're not feeling so good, you don't feel like doing a super intense workout, and you're limited, you have limited time, do a flow session. You're still getting a workout. You're still telling your muscles to adapt. You're working on mobility. You're working on flexibility. And at the end of a flow session, you often feel much better. Now, the third program that's included in this particular bundle is a very important one because oftentimes you have no access to a gym or very minimal access to equipment. You can't go to the gym. I don't have much time. I don't have lots of equipment here. What can I do? Well, then you do a workout from Maps Anywhere. Maps Anywhere utilizes resistance bands. Resistance bands can be, you can travel with these. They fit inside a luggage uh, very, very easily. You can attach them to your door. Uh, there's uh, easy attachments. You can train the entire body. Um, there's also exercises that utilize a broomstick uh, with tension. You could do those movements as well, strengthen and build the body. This one was specifically designed to be done at home or anywhere. That's why it's called Maps Anywhere. And it requires very, very minimal equipment. So if you can't make it to the gym, uh, this is the program you want to pull from. And this one they probably ended up using the most, right? And that's because, I mean, and this was something that Katrina and I, uh, you know, we made this pack before Max is that, you know, we did not want to become the parents who all of a sudden completely stopped their lives and did not travel still and go places with our son. And so we do that a lot. We're down at the beach all the time. We've gone other Southern California. Now we're not flying as much as what we were flying the year before because of COVID, but we definitely are still doing a lot of things. But a lot of these things that we do, we're out in the middle of the I'm on the beach somewhere. We're in places. Yeah, no where, gyms, no dumbbells. Yeah, there's no no access, things like that. So I think there's a lot of moms that can relate to this that you're not always in your home setting. You just because you have a kid and you're at home a lot at the very beginning of having a child, once you get past that first you know couple month phase that what Sal's in right now, you start to take your kid places. And a lot of times those places are geared around them more it is your pleasure of being able to get to a gym or have access or even being able to leave him or her to go to a gym. So you have to do it inside your hotel room or yeah. living room of the it's place you're staying. It's also very inclusive in terms of like uh, we, we, uh, my wife and I would go through these workouts and anywhere and uh, the kids would watch us doing them and they would watch these movements and, yes. and they would, they would want to join in, you know, on the workouts with us. And it was a way that like the family could, you know, have this sort of physical output uh, all together. And it was something that was organized and pretty easy to follow. Uh, obviously some of the moves, you know, you'll find are very challenging and, and we put that in there mm -hmm. specifically to make it so, you know, there's, there's some sort of goals to achieve within the program, but uh, there's some also ones that, that are very corrective and, and help a lot with the joints as well. Yeah. And you know, here's a big, you know, especially when you first get started, especially in the first, you know, six months to a year of uh, following a fitness program, momentum and consistency are very important. What I mean by that is oftentimes you get in a rhythm and then you, because of travel or no access to the gym, you miss a week and it feels like almost impossible to get back into the rhythm. A program like Maps Anywhere allows you to con continue that consistency to maintain that rhythm because again, it can literally be done um, anywhere. So what we just talked about were three programs, Maps Anabolic, which is the foundational workout program, which is the best one for building muscle, boosting metabolism. That's the one you should be focused on doing the most. Maps hit when you're out of time, you don't got much time. I got 15, 20 minutes. What can I do? Let's do Maps hit. And then Maps Anywhere, when you have access to barely any equipment and you want to get a great workout. But there's one thing that we're, we haven't really touched on, and this is a very important part, which is nutrition. Nutrition, by far, is the most difficult part, okay? The workout part, however hard it is to do a workout, be consistent, and all that stuff, you can go ahead and multiply that by 10 when it comes to nutrition. Nutrition is with you all the time. You may only work out twice a week, but you eat every single day, and diets do not work. They just don't. Statistically speaking, 90% of people that start a diet fail, and they typically fail in a very big fashion. They typically go not just back to where they were before, but even worse. A lot of this has to do with the root causes of what motivates us to eat a particular way and the restrictive nature of diets. Really, it doesn't matter if it's low carb, keto, paleo, Mediterranean, Whole30, whatever. Um, the basics are the same. You have to eat less calories. Then you burn to burn body fat. And if you don't have the right mindset around nutrition and you don't understand balance properly, it's going to fail for you. 
What we included in this bundle is something called the Intuitive Eating Guide. Now, what this does is this addresses all of these things. So it does talk about the right foods to eat, how to design your nutrition around your goal, but it also talks about how it becomes a part of your life. It's not just about following a diet or counting your macros or your calories, but rather what's the long-term approach? Because if your eating strategy is producing stress in you, it is not a long-term strategy. If you're stressing about what to eat and, oh no, I'm at the restaurant, what do I do? It's not going to work for you. The intuitive eating guide talks all about that. It's not only that, it's that to your point about diets, right? The most common thing that all diets have is that they're calorie restrictive. That's the base of all of them. Like you could say here, we could argue all day which one's more effective for which people. Yeah, but the the biggest thing that makes them all effective and why they've worked for thousands and millions of people is because they're calorie restricted. You go from eating X amount of calories every day, whatever the average American eats, and then all of a sudden you cut that in half. No, no, no shit, you're going to lose weight. Now the problem is the way we're we're talking about how we've designed the programming in here is to speed up and, and build your metabolism first. And that will lead to this leaning out, right? If you're not feeding yourself enough uh, enough calories and enough nutrients, the body can't build muscle out of thin air. And this is why I would always rather have this client eating in a more intuitive fashion where I can ask them, are you hungry? You're hungry. Let's eat, but let's just make the right choices. And, that, and that's where the intuitive eating guide, I think, is going to really help this person guide them through how they should eat versus just eating in a low calorie. A low calorie, sure, will lose you weight in the first month, but that's not what we want to do. Right. Yeah. We want to build the it's metabolism. About sustainability. Yeah. And I want you to be, I want you fed. If you're hungry, I want you to eat. I just want you to make the right choices. If you are working out, your body is telling you you're hungry and you're feeding it the right choices, the right balance of food and nutrients that it needs to build muscle, you're going to build muscle. Right. Eating in a in a properly intuitive way, and I know that the word intuitive sounds a little misleading, like you're going to magically know what to eat. No, really, it's about becoming more in touch with what is really going to help uh, you get to your goals. It's going to help you feel much better. So through the Intuitive Eating Guide, you understand the basics, macronutrients, proteins, fats, uh, carbs, and calories. But you also learn to identify how foods affect your body. You learn how to identify hunger over things like boredom or stress eating. You learn how to find balance in enjoying sometimes the hedonistic foods, you know, when you have the occasional cookie or glass of wine. There is structure to this uh, eating program, but it does work well to get you more on a long-term type of nutrition uh, basis. Not the typical, again, follow this rigid structure and diet. And then, of course, when you go off of it, everything goes back to where it was before. And we included this because here's the bottom line. We're looking to help people accomplish long-term success, okay? Diets are surrounded by stress. They're surrounded by this restricted feeling. They're surrounded by this binge mentality when you finally fall off. Intuitive eating is totally different. It's more of a stress-free approach. It's more of a balanced approach. And the book, the, the booklet that it comes with teaches you how to move through this process and feel stress-free and feed yourself appropriately to take care of yourself like somebody worth taking care of. That's a big part of intuitive eating. So when you follow all of this together in the context of what you typically find with a busy mom, a modern mother, Um, You have the program to speed up your metabolism, the program that's great for the short workouts where you want to maximize the time, the program that's great when you have no equipment, you have workouts that are excellent when you're not feeling up for it and you need something that's going to just make you feel better, improve mobility. And then there's an intuitive eating guide in there that is anti-diet. It's really about helping you accomplish long-term success through nutrition. There's also free th- free things that we have, like the macro calculator too. So don't forget we have things like that for those that want more specifics on like, you know, because you're a different weight and how many, gra- like how many grams of protein should I be targeting? So we have a lot of free resources out there that you can use to complement this too. So if you're a, a mom or soon to be mom and you're interested in following something like this, you have this as a bundle, but then you also have a lot of free resources that complement this. And the, the macro calculator is the first thing that comes to mind. The second thing that I would highly recommend is the assessment portion. You know, we did a uh, Maps Prime webinar that that Justin did, which is assessing you kind of your movement patterns before. Those are all free things that you use that I think would complement. Yeah, this. The, the macro calculator is free. That's at mapsmacro.com. The webinar is uh, mapsprimewebinar.com. 
And then the bundle that we're talking about with all these programs that are really designed and well-written. So in other words, this is, how, this is what it will look like for you. You go online, you go into your workout, whichever one you're going to do for the day. Um, you pull up your program. It tells you what exercises, sets, reps. There's a video of someone demonstrating the exercise. It's full instructions, everything you need to follow the program besides your own effort uh, and dedication. That's called the Fit Mom Bundle. You can find that at Maps Fitness Products. Dot com. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come find us on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on social media. At Mind Pump Justin is for Justin. At Mind Pump Sal is for me. At Mind Pump Adam is for Adam. And that's both on Instagram and now also on Parlor. Choice. It was like I was going mental. When exactly did you notice the changes? <sighs> well, it was... The first couple weeks that I started to notice these subtle changes. The first was my energy. 